Paul M.G. says, what are some signs you've been saved? Okay, a couple of signs, a couple of things you, you should look at. Let's go to a couple of passages. Here's a passage that you all need to know. Obviously, you've heard this passage before, but this is a passage or one of two passages I'm going to point to to help you understand how you can know some signs that you can use to kind of judge yourself or to examine if you are saved. Paul says so. Examine yourself. Test yourself. Make sure. You want to make sure. Why? Because there are a lot of people who actually think that they are Christian, who think that, legitimately think so, and are not. So how do we make sure? Well, there are some results of being saved. Yes, the Bible calls them results. Now, the way they've been translated, and traditionally we've kept this translation, which is fruit, but the word karpos can be fruit, but it's also produce or the result of, and so you may know where I'm going. That is Galatians 5, chapter 22. It says, but the fruit, and let's put on the screen, the word for fruit is the word over here in Greek, is the word karpos. The word, look down at the bottom, it says it's the fruit, but it's also what it literally means is the result of something. And so the result of, let's say, this this, this vine producing these 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 grapes is the result of. Okay, so if that, if that kind of helps out. And so the fruit, the fruit or the result of the spirit is love. If you do not have love, if you don't have Christ. Now, is it born out perfectly like we see it in Jesus or even some of the, the, the apostles? No, we struggle. There are sometimes I love this person, but I'm not going to show it today. This person has gotten on my nerves and I'm a little upset. So, no, I'm not showing you love. I love you. Just not. I'm not loving you that much today. We have those moments when we don't love perfectly, but you you can tell if the level of love in you, specifically your love for Christ, has grown. So those are some things that you can look at. Also, he says joy, peace, patience. You're a believer, but you're just uneasy about everything. You, you're unnerved. You have no joy, no peace. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Now, does not having enough joy and peace, does that mean that you're not a believer? No. It's not what these mean. Uh, as a matter of fact, you won't fulfill all of these totally, especially all, of the, all at once. But it indicates that maybe something is off. And if you're not experiencing any of these, then then maybe that is an issue. Maybe that does mean that you aren't what you say you are. But now the very fact that you would even question whether you are indeed a believer, if you're worrying, that tends to bode well for you because Non-Christians don't tend to worry about not being Christian. Christians are the ones, you know, I just, I'm not sure. I, I've, I've had a tough stretch. Maybe I, maybe I never became a believer. Maybe I never placed my faith in Christ. Maybe that's what it is. Well, that's a good thing. That really is a good thing to kind of question, you know, because again, your flesh, what, the, what that shows is your flesh has done something, has, 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 has caused something, and your spirit is bothered. You know what that means? That indicates that there is some sort of level, there's some level of repentance in you. You have a repentant heart. And so your sin or other sin bothers you. Now, does it bother you so much that you want to go out and, and beat yourself and, and cut yourself and <laughs> put sackcloth and ashes? No, but what it, you know, what? I need to fix that. And so let's, let's finish reading these. And I've got another passage for you. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness faithfulness. This faithfulness is not the kind of faithfulness where I know that I'm saved. No, the faithfulness is that I'm doing things because I'm saved. Are you with me? Um, let me just, let me give an analogy. Any of you guys work out, when you go to work out, let's say it's, it's, it's October 15th and you go to work out today. I don't care if you worked out for 30 minutes or if you worked out for three hours. When you come back home and look in the mirror, you won't, what kind of, what results will you see? You won't see any results. Same thing if you go for the next three, four, five days. Will you see results in working out in three, four or five days when you go back to the mirror? No, you won't. No, you will not. At some point in time, though, you're going to see some results. Can't tell you when, can't tell you what day, but you're going to see some results. One of the things that you're going to actually notice, though, internally is you're feeling a little bit differently. Obviously, you feel famished by the workout, but... Uh, you're going to start seeing some, some some results eventually. What day, how many days, 20 days into it, 30 days, but you're going to. What causes you to see those results? It's not the actual weights. It's the consistency of doing it. It's not the fact. See, you don't, and by the way, this is just a little help, help tip. You don't build weight, I mean, build muscle, and you don't build stamina while at the gym. 
Nope, you do not. You build it when you're back at home resting after you leave. And so what has happened starts building up in you. And so the body has to recover and build up and so forth. And so it's the consistency. And that's what he's talking about. One of the fruits of the spirit is just this consistency, this faithfulness that's brought out in it. Let's, let's continue reading. And so he says also self-control. If you are a believer and you have you lack self-control, well, then we've got an issue because these are the things that the spirit is doing in you. The result, the fruit of it uh, against such thing. There is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ, Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. That doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. That doesn't mean that you don't have temptations. That doesn't mean that if you're a young man and you see a young woman walk by that you don't do a double take or same thing with a woman or you don't have uh, jealous fits or you don't have rages and you these things do happen. But what you're doing is you're constantly fighting. But let me also give you another passage also that I think is is necessary to um, to keep in mind if indeed you are a believer. And this comes out of Jesus' mouth. Uh, John chapter 15 he says, but when the helper comes, whom I will send, that's the Holy Spirit, to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. He says, and you will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, which only happens if you are a Christian, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then the Holy Spirit wants to testify of Christ in some way, shape, or fashion. That means that you had to go on the street corner and testify, but you have to at least let people, at some point in time, you're going to let somebody know who you are and what Christ has done for you. And so those are the ways, the things that you can kind of look at to see if indeed some signs to show that you have been saved. Amen.